Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers Generation 1, Decepticon Cassettes, Rumble, and Ravage. These figures came out in 1984 as part of the Decepticon Cassette Assortment, and I'll be reviewing the 2019 Vintage G1 reissue. These figures are a repaint of the Microchange Microcassette Robo Micross, and a repurposing of the Microcassette Robo Jaguar. Rumble is a red and black microcassette tape, which is identical in all ways except coloration from Frenzy, right down to the sticker detailing. Rumble's stickers are a nice silver, red and blue, with the same striping as Frenzy, coming off as warmer and more energetic. I like to think that Rumble is loaded with some rock and roll while Frenzy is full of emo shit. Ravage is the odd man out as far as tapes go, being the most unique out of them all for being the only one not to have a repaint in the main line. His tape mode is probably the worst. It's all gappy and doesn't hold together very well due to transformation. The cassette detailing doesn't do a great job at looking cohesive either because of the Jaguar head looking at you and the die-cast shins. Of course, they can both fit into Soundwave's chest no problem. Being a straight repaint, Rumble's transformation is identical to Frenzy's, and feels just about the same, with no noticeable changes in plastic or joint quality. It's still very fun. Ravage's transformation is not very fun, however. All that you do is just pull everything out with no thought or interesting design choices involved. You just fiddle with it until it looks vaguely like a cat and can actually stand on its own accord. Frenzy probably had my favorite cassette mode, but Rumble has my favorite robot mode out of the set. Red and black is a phenomenal color scheme, and suits this mold very well with its placement. But coming off the back of my Frenzy review so soon, there isn't much to talk about. Ravage... definitely looks like a cat. He's really lithe and slender, which works for this sneaky, slithering spy. I mean, as long as you ignore those giant honking missile launchers grafted to his hips, that is. It's just a shame that he does absolutely zero transformation in the Z-axis, meaning he has four minuscule feet in a very narrow line, which makes for poor balancing. I prefer to keep Ravage sitting on his haunches, which improves stability considerably. Well, this articulation segment won't last very long, considering Rumble here is a repaint of Frenzy, so his articulation is exactly the same. He has a bicep slash shoulder swivel, depending on how you want to look at it. He has a double jointed elbow. Uh, his head can pop in. His legs can move back the knee. And they have a swivel at the thigh. That is it. Moving on to the more interesting character in this dual set, Ravage. He's technically the most poseable out of this set of cassettes considering how he has just the most joints, however they're not particularly useful. Ravage can look up very happily. He can shake his tail and he can be alert or uh, relaxed or whatever. Um, his front legs have three joints in them, one at the shoulder, one at the elbow here. This uh, forearm piece is actually die-cast metal and one at the paw. So he can, he can beg like a dog, even though he's a cat, even though he looks like a dog, and everyone says he's a dog. Uh, the hind legs, they're pretty much the same. Let me take off these to, so you can get a better look at them. The hind legs are exactly the same. They have one big joint at the hip that goes forward and backwards. It's a little hard to see because he's black and my background is black and my lights aren't helping. He has another joint at the knee here which is also die-cast, and he has a joint here at the toe, which is pretty good. However, he can't really use them because he barely stands up as it is, unless you have him sitting down on his haunches like I do, so you're not going to get much posing out of him unless you have a flight stand, which I used for this thumbnail. But uh, you can get him into a standing posture with all four legs on the ground. It's a little difficult to get all four paws touching the floor at the same time, but you can manage. And sometimes he wants to fall over onto one side, which is pretty normal for Ravage, but yeah, there you go. And nothing moves outwards. They're all just 
forward facing joints. So that sucks. But it is G1 and he does have a lot of motion for what you get. So honestly, it's not that bad. If you're interested in any of the other tapes, you might as well get these two as well. I guess it was intentional that both Laserbeak and Ravage were featured heavily in the cartoon, yet they were packaged in separate two-packs, possibly so that kids will want both. Either that or Hasbro just didn't want two of the same toy on one card. Fair enough. Still, Rumble is quite possibly my favorite of the tapes, and Ravage is very competent at what he sets out to do. I give this set a hearty recommendation. This has been Kick Catastrophe. If you enjoyed this video, please share and subscribe. Transform and roll out.